So Shacktoberfest is back for the 2023 season, but did it deliver? Well, let's go through the event and let's overall, let's see what it had to offer this year. For starters, to get in was a kind of a nightmare. There's a line to get in to just security, and then there's a line to go through security, and then there's a line to scan your ticket. And then, only then, are you finally in Shacktoberfest, because how do you know you'll have the giant uh, Shack um, blow up thing in the front and you walk through that, you officially enter Shacktoberfest. Uh, a lot of great things to offer right then and there uh, where, where they had uh, our entrance at right there. We had, of course, the uh, little pumpkin graveyard, as you will, or like, you know, a little pumpkin patch they had of all the glowing pumpkins and stuff. The giant Shacktoberfest uh, sign. And then that leads us right into our very first scare zone. <laughs> Now, after going through the shipwreck graveyard, we found ourselves uh, finally at the face of the event. Uh, I will say that the shipwreck graveyard was really cool to go through. The aesthetics, the the uh, scenic design, all looked really dope. Uh, that was really fun to go through. The the nice little uh, diesel bar that they have over there. A little shout out to DJ Diesel, Shaq's little DJ name. That was really cool. Uh, but then going around the corner, we find ourselves at our first mates, which was Dead Man's Wharf. So let's see what I had to bring to the table.
So I will say this year that with Dead Man's Wharf, it looked a little bit more extended. They actually took the time to uh, make it a little bit bigger to fill up that whole kind of front building that they have right there and kind of expand that maze and expand that story. Uh, that one was a lot of fun. Got out of it and it takes you right back over to Shipwreck Grave. Uh, but then from there, it was time to hit the main area of the event. We're talking the midway. We're talking about other mazes, the dance party, the rides, the carnival games, the food. All that is in this section right here. Now we did get a tip uh, midway through walking through the section that to hit uh, the gray uh, ghost maze. However, uh, I had heard that it reached wait times of three hours. Uh, this was the only maze that was on ship this year. So we had to make sure we, we saw that one and, and I'm glad we did. to the boat we go they got a party going on up there shit now we about to get scared in here oh my god ah, i'm too tall for this boat Oh my god. That's Canada. It's already eerie as it is, man. Hey, I should have 
brought my ghost hunting device. Help us, please! Jeez. Please help us! We have no supplies. We need help badly. Please continue forward. There's some, there's some sailors that go mad, you see? Dude, I did not see it working down here. Attention! Oh, whoa! Troops fall in line. Prepare for battle stations. Move, move, move! Whoa, this just got interesting. This just got really interesting. Somebody Now something I didn't catch on camera that uh, happened at the event was uh, midway through the event around, actually not even midway through, like about an hour or two into the event, the Grey Ghost started flooding. Uh, the maze section where you actually go onto the ship to the war scene started flooding. And uh, they actually had to uh, shut down the maze, evacuate the area, and the fire department actually had to come out and drain the maze. Uh, so that was something that I've never seen at a haunt before. But, uh, you know, with it being on the Queen Mary, uh, you never know what's going to happen there. Uh, but from there, uh, Hayes actually got us uh, tickets to go see the engine room experience. This is going to run you about $10 a ticket. I personally don't believe that $10 should be charged for this one. I think $5 a person should be more charged towards this, but nonetheless, it was a really cool experience, so here's some of that.
I thought what was really cool about the engine experience was the fact that they had all the history of the Queen Mary there and then they had a little haunted history of, of the Queen Mary as well because the Queen Mary is infamous for its uh, paranormal sightings and whatnot. So that was cool to have that little museum there and then to go see the engine room. That was a little eerie as it was. Uh, they had the music playing which was really cool. but. Just because you know the history of the boat and everything, it's really eerie. Uh, after the engine room, we decided to make our way back out to the main area, uh, specifically the stage area, so we can uh, make our way through the pumpkin patch, which was another maze next up on our list. <laughs>
music for a maze. It's like we just throw in the playlist and I like it. Body bags. Now the pumpkin patch this year was a lot more extended in my opinion. I thought they did a really good job um, with aesthetic wise and everything. It's a lot of fun to go through. Uh, so far with this event I had noticed that there was a lot of major changes from year one. And that's really cool. I like to see haunts build year by year. This year was way more scarier. It was way more like open. Uh, the mazes were a lot longer and this one was no uh, shy of that. They did a really good job of transitioning all those scenes and whatnot and I, I just had a fun time going through that one. That one's always a fan favorite of ours. Uh, but next up we went through the Pirate's Cove. If you guys remember Pirate's Cove last year, it was just kind of like a really cool ship uh, pirate aesthetic maze. Uh, so we went through that and here's what that had to bring to the table this year.
Yeah. Now, I will say, I think throughout the night, uh, Pirate's Cove was probably my least favorite, only because it wasn't as scary. Aesthetic-wise, it looked really cool. Uh, the ship looked dope. Uh, everything else inside looked dope, but uh, scary-wise, just didn't really feel it. Um, but to end the night, we finally finished it with the circus maze that they had there. This was probably one of my favorites out of the entire event. That and the Great Ghost were, were really good top-notch mazes. Uh, but this one got me a few times, and uh, here's why. Candy. Yeah. This is Wilfred. Hi, Wilfred. And that? And this is Kevin. Kevin! Yeah. I love Kevin. I know, we all love Kevin. Straight. Just look straight. That's all you gotta do. Just came out a little dizzy, but it's okay. <laughs> is he good? Yeah, all right. Is he good? Where? Did you do that? It's your monkey? No, that one. Yeah, my monkey. We gotta get a full shot of it. Monkey. Bigfoot! I'm a big fan. So after we were all said and done with the event, we actually had a few people we knew working the Midway area. So we decided to just kind of hang around, grab some footage of people in the Midway. Uh, this this event really improved a lot within year two. Um, I really enjoyed it and, and whatnot. But here's some of that Midway footage right there. We had a lot of good uh, slides being hit, a lot of jokes being made. Uh, it was just a fun time. So here's some of that.
thought this was Disneyland. I was like, you thought a line to come through here. Wow. Yeah. With the way this I, crowd I, looks, it's starting to look like Halloween Horror Nights. A little bit, yeah. 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 Concludes our time at Shacktoberfest. Uh, it was a very good year two. I cannot wait to see what they come back for year three. Um, they really improved on uh, it being a lot more scarier. Uh, the mazes were a lot longer. Um, and uh, I think the addition of the Grey Ghost was a phenomenal move on their end because of the sole purpose of that being the backdrop of this event and to finally bring uh you know mazes back on the ship again after all this time since you know dark harbor you know it was cool to go back on the ship and, and see those mazes especially that maze alone very eerie very scary because of the history of the boat it just feels creepy feels like you're being watched the entire time whether it's a scare actor or it's an actual spirit, it just feels like you're being watched the entire time. I had a great time with Shacktoberfest this year. Special shout out to uh, 13th Floor Entertainment. If you guys were at the panel for Midsummer Scream, they did hook it up with free tickets. That is exactly how we got to go to the event uh, last weekend. So thank you, 13th Floor, for doing that every single year at, at Midsummer Scream. We really enjoyed uh, Shacktoberfest, and we can't wait to see what year three has to bring. With all that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. We have tons more content coming out for you guys. But um, stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Uh, I'm your host, Anthony, and I'll see you guys in the next video.